applications besides just warmth. This is my flat auxiliary pack, uh, which is held also in a Ziploc bag. Keep it waterproof. And we have a, a desiccant pack to absorb any water should uh, any water leak inside. This is my uh, the other candy tin. We're going to talk about that in the next video, though. So we're going to put that to the side. So this is my flat accessory pack. I really like this concept of storing flat things that are credit card sized in all my kits. But they're a little bit different for each of my kits. I'm going to try and go through this one quickly. In this top layer, we have a mirror. Uh, I have left the protective coating on it. I made this myself by cutting a mirror from a, uh, a kid's locker. Here's what's left of it. Uh, this came with a uh, mirror in it and it's for uh, school kids to put in their locker and they have a little mirror to look at their uh, face and brush their hair and put on their makeup, I suppose. I've left the plastic on it so that it doesn't uh, doesn't get scratched up and it has a little sighting hole. So if you know the method for uh, signaling, uh, which you can read about in some other video, not mine, uh, you can use this as your main signaling mirror. I also like that it's rectangular, so if you cut it in half with a knife, you have two square mirrors, and with two mirrors, you can make a periscope. Sometimes, occasionally, you might need a, a periscope. This is a paper ruler. It's uh, one foot long. Sometimes when you construct stuff, you need to have very exact measurements. We have uh, English and Imperial. You print this yourself on your own printer. They also come in yard size, uh, but I didn't bother that for this kit. This just uses a one foot meter one, a one foot uh, length ruler. This is glow in the dark tape. This is the same tape that I use to make my glow fob. And it's just glow in the dark material. You must have seen devices that glow in the dark. You charge it with light and then it grows, glows green quite brightly for a few minutes, but then it dims quickly. But it still has some residual glow to it, even all throughout the night. So once you, your eyes get dark adapted, you actually can uh, still make it out. Here's another thing to make you visible. This is a reflective, uh, reflective, uh, what do they call this? Retro, retro reflective mirroring. And it's a piece of adhesive tape so you can peel off the backing and then apply this to things. This helps with your visibility. Also, if you're trying to find your camp, uh, if you put this on a tree near your camp, if you walk away from your camp at night, you can find it by shining your flashlight uh, or your lasers. You'll be seeing some lasers coming up in the uh, video about my kit that I carry inside some of this stuff. So that's to increase your visibility. So that was the top section. Next section. Coffee filter. It's not for making coffee. It's to be used as a dusk mask. You hold this over your mouth, over your face, uh, and this becomes a dusk dust mask. Uh, and you can filter out, for instance, if you were in a swarm of insects, if you were in a building collapse, if you think of the people in Manhattan during 9-11 that were covered with dust. I bet they wish they had something like this to put over their face. Uh, so this can filter out dust, uh, sawdust. Sometimes you'll be in a room filled with sawdust. If you've ever used a circular saw, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, so this can be a filter. It can also filter water for water collection to help get rid of uh, dirt and grime, although it's not going to get rid of bacteria, so you're going to still need to use sterilization methods. Some tin foil. What you can do is when you have an Altoids tin, here's another one for instance, uh, the inside of the tin, here's, let's use this tin, what you can do is uh, make a fist, wrap the tin foil around your fist, put it in the uh, Altoids tin or the mint tin, and then use this as a cooking vessel for boiling water. So tin foil has many applications. Again, it's another signaling device, not a very good one compared to my real mirror, though. Uh, this is a scalpel blade. Uh, this is a 
gamma sterilized uh, medical scalpel blade for doing minor surgery, but it's also just a backup knife. Uh, so if you need another knife, here's one, or if you need to do some surgery and you need to, a sterile uh, scalpel blade, that's a number 22 scalpel blade. Here's just a little subway pass. Uh, it's an old one, but it's a nice piece of uh, stiff plastic. This can be useful for uh, getting through certain kinds of locks. Uh, there's sometimes applications where you need a very thin piece of flexible plastic. Here's some uh, more Gorilla Tape. Uh, again, the same thing as what I showed before. I have the paper backing, so you peel it away. I don't like the concept of wrapping duct tape around itself, because that means that the last bit is kind of wasted uh, when it sticks to itself. It's very hard to peel away from each other. So having uh, extra adhesive back paper uh, for my tape devices, I think, is quite useful. This is a little survival guide that came with another uh, Another uh, kit that I once bought shows the little signaling method for the mirror right there. Uh, plus it gives just sort of basic instructions of uh, survival tips. And I have a means for reading this even at night with no flashlight that you'll be seeing later in the video. or later in an upcoming video. Here's a sponge. It's a pop-up sponge. Sponges are useful not just for cleaning and wiping, but for moving water from one location to another. Uh, keep in mind, your only access to water may be things like uh, dew on leaves. Uh, you can wipe the, the surface of the leaf to absorb the water. Uh, once this is soaking wet, it pops up and becomes a normal sponge, and then you can squeeze the water out uh, into, your, into a bag or into your mouth. If it's straight from the leaf, it's probably pretty clean. Uh, or water from the transpiration bag or using that uh, plastic bag as a solar still used for uh, groundwater. Uh, or you can use a solar still to change uh, seawater into drinkable water. So that's what the sponge is for. Money, when you hit civilization. This is my water collection bag. I've shown this in some of my other videos, including my micro survival kit. It's a produce bag from a supermarket. Uh, can hold a lot of water, and believe it or not, they really are watertight. I've tested several of them. You're going to want to sterilize the water with some uh, sterilization techniques I talk about later on. Pack of skinny matches. I've cut it down to just one layer of matches to make it nice and skinny one of many forms of fire starting uh, in my kit. Alcohol swab for sterilizing a knife. Say I want to use my Leatherman knife uh, for some application where I need it to be sterile so I don't get infected. Uh, that's a bit of alcohol. Uh, this is a char cloth for starting fires. This is very good for uh, igniting from sunlight using the mirror or using a parabolic uh, mirror from a polished uh, soda can. I have a video about that. This is one of the best materials for that uh, char cloth. And it can get kind of powdery, so I put it in this extra little uh, Ziploc bag that I have uh, cut down to make it very small and compact. These are water sterilization tabs. Uh, this is good for uh, a liter of water each. Only two is not a lot. Uh, a better kit would certainly have more than this, but remember this is a wallet-sized little small kit, and it's got the expiration date written on it there, 2014. Uh, so sterilization tabs is one method of cleaning up water instead of boiling it. This is a twi uh, twist tie to keep that bag shut, uh, but you can use twist ties for lashing all sorts of things. Piece of right in the rain paper for taking notes or to leave a note to uh, People search teams looking for you, like you could write, I was heading north, uh, have an injured foot out of water, uh, today's date and time, which I would know from my solar-powered watch. Uh, so uh, leaving a note to rescuers what direction you were headed in case you have to leave your camp. It's going to help them find you. Uh, this is a uh, sharpening stone. Uh, just got this recently. It's made by Easy Lap. I haven't used it yet, but it's a nice diamond encrusted uh, sharpening stone 
made of uh, metal, and it has a little uh, groove here for sharpening fishing hooks. Apparently you can use that to sharpen points like fishing hooks, I suppose, needles, uh, pins, and this is a little protective sheath to keep it from scratching things up. So that's the first three layers. This is a magnification uh, card, Fresnel lens, Fresnel lens, I forget how you pronounce it. Uh, I do not recommend these for fire starting, except they are so small they take up no space. So it can't hurt to have this also to look at your uh, finger if you're doing surgery, if to get splinters out and whatnot. The reason these are a terrible form of fire starting is because they never work at night, they never work when it's rainy, and they never work when it's cloudy. So when you're going to be able to use this is very limited in the number of hours, and you can get trapped and need survival mechanisms to start fire, uh, you need it 24-7, not something that only works with bright overhead sunlight. A band-aid, just one. Uh, that may seem odd. Many people carry more than one band-aid. Uh, the thing is, I make my own band-aids out of tape and cotton dispensed from my tampon you'll be seeing coming up in a later, later video. So that's why there's just one band-aid. I typically make my band-aids in a survival situation. You're going to look funny wearing a homemade band-aid in public, but remember this is a survival situation. This is a uh, uh, thick, coarse grit sandpaper, and this is fine grit. In theory, the fine grit can help you polish up the bottom of a, tr of a uh, can, of a soda can, to make it into a parabolic mirror. Uh, I've had somewhat luck using sandpaper, but they say you can also use toothpaste, apparently chocolate, and uh, riverbed mud can also be used to polish the bottom of a soda can to make it into a parabolic mirror for sun collection for fire starting. And now finally, this is a spoon. It's sort of a spatula, but when you pinch these two together, you have a spoon for eating. So if your hands are filthy, you won't contaminate the food that you're eating. Or if you need to uh, use anything where you need sort of a waterproof spatula-like device. This is another uh, match striker. Uh, sort of just an extra one in case my other one were to get lost or, or wet. Uh, so that's for match striking. And here's some copper, uh, copper wire. Remember the uh, aluminum foil I showed earlier? Well, this can help you make a little basket for it in case you didn't have the uh, cooking tin uh, to put the uh, aluminum foil in. And this will help you make a little pot or to hang, hang it over a fire. Uh, you can't put aluminum foil directly on hot coals. It has to be suspended uh, or else it'll uh, break. So this would help you make a little cooking basket. And that's it for the flat pack. So finally that leaves us with the two candy tins. This candy tin is the core of my survival kit. Let's take a sneak peek of what's inside. 